<sighs> All right, we're starting this off strong. Yes. This is a this is a new bunch for free range American. <laughs> Hi. Wow. Hi, um, Eli. Hi, Jeremy Gunders. We have two guests. Introduce yourself. Well. <laughs> Eddie first. Eddie Gallagher, second time being on here. Yes, second. You were yep. one of the first. That one shot the, show, yeah. The first eight that we ever did. The OGs. Yeah. yeah. And then we've got Donut Operator returning. Hey, guys. Do it. You've done this before. Yep. Now, nice. you're second here time also. specifically planned. We planned you. Being yeah, here. planted me. Because you guys have some, some Common, historians. Yes. Bad blood, right? Yeah, yeah you guys. Yeah. This one time we settle it today. <laughs> Going back and forth on Instagram and things like that. No, how is it? How is it that you guys came about to know each other? Uh, when he was getting into trouble, like the very first of the trouble, I made a video about his whole situation, breaking everything down from what I could read that was publicly available, and it hit like two and a half million views. It wasn't just headline garbage. You know, you actually went into no. the details. For I everybody. tried the best I could. You I actually talk- looked into it and investigated it, unlike everybody else in the case. <laughs> yeah. And random YouTube guy here. I was like talking to your wife and talking to all his best friends and people we deployed with. And like, no one was really doing that. So, <laughs> reporting? Yeah. What? Yeah. That yeah. thing where you gather the facts. facts. Reporting yeah. insanity. Without bias. Mm. Yeah. Critical thinking. Because you didn't know him. You didn't have a bias. No, you didn't have a goal. Never even spoke to him until the video like was released. You just wanted to know yourself. Was yeah. it yeah. did you did you initially set out like I'm making a video on this, or was it you started to even just read past the headline and go, wait a minute, there's more to this story? Yeah, that, like that's my the whole YouTube channel is always say read past the headlines. And I was looking at all the headlines and they were just slaying him. Like oh, yeah. not one good thing. And New I was York like Times doesn't like you, right? Yeah, well, Dave Phillips from New York Times. Yeah, does not like Fuck me one him. bit. That guy is a tool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we refer to, like you would say, he's a big tool. Huge tool. So Sky Crane. Sky Crane is a, oh, is a there we really go. big tool. So we'll so call him the Sky Crane. Sky Crane. There we go. We just gave him his first call sign. <laughs> Sky Crane. Dave Sky Crane, Crane. Sky Crane Phillips. Yeah, we yeah, can make jerseys. <laughs> Yeah. Business cards. You should send him business cards for Christmas. I actually in a lawsuit with him right oh, now. Oh, okay. You know, well, <laughs> yeah. that means you have his address, maybe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Can you call? Do we need to cut this part out? No. It's okay. Fine. Yeah, I can. I can call him what he is, which is a sky crane. <laughs> Other than that, Damn sky Other than crane. that yeah. Oh. So then, tell us how did you hear about this video, and when did you finally watch it? So, we'll, so we'll it's. Here. I didn't get to watch it until well after it was made, but when I I was actually locked up at the time and. uh one of the guards, I forget what day it was, you know, came up to me and was like all excited. And he's one, he was one of the cool guards who was, you know, supporting me when There's I was in there. That cool guard, you know? Yeah. And he was like, dude, donut operator just made a whole thing about you, you know. And I had no idea like uh, just who imagine donut operator like, was and not being who, in this space were. <laughs> and hearing the word donut operator. Yeah, I like <laughs> I had him repeated. I was like, who? And he's like, donut operator. You don't know who that is? I was like, no, I don't know who that is. <laughs> He was like, bro, it's it's He's really good. With big well, mustache. Huh? I wasn't on social media like or anything, you know, before then, or because I so I really didn't have any frame of reference. But yeah, he sort of broke it down for me, like how many views it was getting, and just like all the information that you had put out, which was cool. It was you know, but it's still at the time not being able to hear it, I was like, all right, well, whatever. But then once I was released, I got to watch it, and it was I mean, it was pretty cool seeing. Especially at that time, having every media outlet smear me with just false information and then listen to someone who's unbiased, just break it down and actually do some critical thinking and be like, none of this makes sense, which I wish you were on the legal team or one of the prosecutors at the time. You could have called the case off. But uh, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. And then we finally met up at uh, SHOT Show. Yep. Yep. SHOT Show this year. Super cool. And then we exchanged skateboards and... Yeah, same my kids, kids are, skateboards. Yeah, yeah, they're still riding them to this day. What's that code word for exchanging skateboards? <laughs> yeah, is that a? Are you guys camouflaging some? Is this a? Be- is this some sort of beard? Don't, don't tell him, Eddie. Don't tell. Him. <laughs> if we, if we get to know each other better. We'll then exchange skateboards. Ah, Eli. Oh yeah. wow, Eli, you wait. just got until the then, we'll just leave the it as is. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. I mean, I I think at the time specifically, you know, I remember when it first went down and. Everyone was jumping to just, just like they always do. Oh, yeah. Headline reading. Oh, my God. I now have an opinion on something I don't know nothing right. about. And 
it was all just a land. They were falling for the propaganda machine because that's what the Navy did. They fired up their propaganda machine. Oh, big time. Yeah. I mean, and if people, like, what was that, two years ago? I mean, if people had a hard time believing, like, you know, the media and all that can do that to you, I mean, I think 2020 has proven that the propaganda machine is a real thing. And if people aren't seeing that now, then I don't, there's no real help for you. It's like, you got to do the thinking on your own. You can't listen to the media. You can't look at the headlines. Everything's clickbait. So, you know, they're going to put up the most outrageous thing they can. So people will, you know, click on it and read the article. And then half the art, like New York Times, so Dave Phillips was pretty much the catalyst for most of those articles where he, and this is, I'm in a lawsuit with them, but pretty much the Navy was leaking him all of my information, like everything, uh, all my privacy information, just like giving it to him being like, write whatever you want. Let's, let's well, hang they, this guy out to they dry. Get, yeah, they get, they both have something to gain there. Yeah. Number one. What is what is New York Times after? They're after stealing the traffic, getting the clicks, and being yep. able to up their ad rates on all these articles. So traffic is motive. And the Navy knows, okay, this becomes currency in our situation. They're going to want this. And what do we want? We want to completely get public opinion in our oh, corner. Yeah. So we can railroad so, this guy. So it's not an outrage. You don't have congressmen getting called. You don't have, you don't have people... It, well, by, you know, getting themselves getting involved, themselves in this, involved in this because situation. it scares people to get involved because they're reading those headlines like, dude, I don't want to touch. Like, because we were, you know, my wife and brother were going around trying to get support. And we had a lot of congressmen like, we we won't touch that just because of what the article said. I mean, so, it, I mean, it works, you know, the way they, you know, go around spreading that agenda. Um, it's pretty crazy. It's, uh, and then Dave Phillips also, ha- he, he has a history of, uh, demonizing veterans. Like if you look past, and I didn't know this about this guy until he was involved in mine, but I looked in the past, all of his articles. I mean, he writes articles demonizing veterans all the time. Like everybody that's been to combat is messed up. We're all crazy. We don't deserve the same rights as everybody else. I mean, it's pretty disgusting once I got to see exactly what that guy's about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was using my case, you know, to forward that agenda. And also he's, you know, tried to write a book about me, which He's still trying to publish or get out, I guess. it's uh, <laughs> Writing an entire book about you? Yeah. He's got a crush on you. He does. Like I, well, that's, yeah, of, I think he, he, I mean, he's obsessed. That is a hard for obsession. Sure. It's, but that's, it's a true but statement. But also, it's he a chase obsessed. for fame. It's a chase for gross. money. And he's lazy. Yeah. Like, oh, I'll be able to, I'll be able to cash in on this because, I mean, that's just, that's a, that's just bad human stuff. Yeah. I mean, you're just a bad human being. Yeah, you're destroying somebody's live, life. Just for not your game. Yeah, yeah for point. your game. And it's not just mine, game. my wife, my kids, like, the, you know, it goes on and on to ever, anybody that's my friend or, I mean, you're ruining everything. And it's um, not even just like the, it's like the threats and everything that go with that. Exactly. Because I guarantee you got oh, shit dude, tons so of every time, death threats. Like old, I, I got, I got right death here. threats because of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get, I didn't get swatted like you did, but, uh, that's, uh, but yeah, I got plenty, Damn. plenty of death threats. Uh, even after the trial, he kept writing articles saying that I got away with it, you know, and that the system is flawed because I was found not guilty. I mean, it, it's crazy. So every time he put out an article, which was about every two weeks after my trial, I'd get like a flurry of just, I mean, people, you know, we're going to come, my kids would get death threats. They're going to come kill, kill them. I mean, it was ridiculous. I mean, we had to call the cops and just let them know like, hey, you know, watch our house. It's insane. There's, yeah. there's a point though that eventually we just need to Jay and Silent Bob strike back these people. Let's start, <laughs> go, go to the house. Up yeah. like, I'm in the face. Hey, you said that you were going to kill me and my kids. Yeah. You're just in full kit with a knife in your teeth. Like, <laughs> what up? Are we doing this? Yeah. <laughs> I brought them. They're in the van. You yeah. get past me, free game. <laughs> So what's it like now, though? Like, do you still have weirdo parents that want to say shit or has it calmed down? It's calmed down. So I think, I mean, that's COVID has definitely helped that situation to where, I mean, you know how society is. Oh, are you a super spreader? (laughs) Just you? (laughs) Yeah. That's That's the new article. article? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We have found patient zero. He said COVID helped him out. (laughs) Yeah. It's, uh, you know how society is. It's like. Oh, what's that squirrel over there? And they forget about, you know, whatever's going on. So it, COVID actually, you know, it helped diet down a little bit, but, uh, uh, it's, 
you know, every once in a while, I'll still get like the one negative Nancy that's like, yeah, but in blah, person, blah, blah. have you had anybody? I've never that had wanted anybody. Buck up nope. In person. And that's weird. the thing. Yeah, that's so weird. crazy. Weird. <laughs> it's, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> because, Believe me. I mean, I'm sure you've played it in your head how you would handle that. And really, it just starts as, all right, what do you know about the case? That's, I mean, that's where it is. I mean, it's, well, then let just, me fill in the holes real quick. Explain to me why you're saying these things to me right now. And, uh, what it, what it all comes down to usually is just, they hate Trump. And because the president got involved in my case, it, it no longer became about me. It was just the president helped you. We hate the president. So therefore, I mean, the most common you know, misconception you. is the president pardoned you. Yes. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Oh, and it's like, I don't know how many times I got to say it either. I've been on like. By the way, congratulations for that. Yeah. <laughs> the Thank you. Yeah, you're like you're like the fucking only person I know that's been pardoned. <laughs> like I think I only watched. Part, pardon me. <laughs> I, I, I've watched you know all them old Western movies quite a few times. I've never seen no one real life pardoned. <laughs> Dude, that was still so crazy. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. The internet just blew up on that one and Reddit. It was all over Reddit because oh, I remember seeing it at the very the very front page of Reddit at oh. the very top. It was like, President pardons war criminal. And I'm like, but uh, no. Is that's same, actually the another same lie. group that said Evan wasn't in the CIA? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's the same. Yeah, so there you Reddit go. Reddit sounds like they got a lot of brain cells over there. Echo <laughs> chamber piece of shit website. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the I, best way to describe yeah, that website. It is. I've so always terrible. said it's the, it's, it's the collective of the most miserable people on the planet. Yeah. yeah. Who have yeah, nothing positive to say. Man, just I really crush. want to check Reddit. So yeah. website of victims. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All victims. Yeah. And experts. Yeah. Expert it's, victims. Experts Experts and, and victims. victims. Listen. <laughs> I have a degree in everything, <laughs> but it's everyone else's fault. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, it's, uh, what were we just talking about? I mean, I kind of, like, you've given me an idea. I think tomorrow I need to call for your die to do an article where it says JT infects himself with COVID so we can talk more <laughs> shit on Facebook. Wait, where you, this is a picture of me, like. <laughs> you know, you know more about it now, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Like, there you go. You're an expert. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to be the super spreader. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that a new term, or do we just make super that spreader? Up? Yeah. Uh, that's what they call Trump rallies, or they've never referred to a riot as a super or spreader. or anything or a protest as oh, a super spreading event. Protest. But if it's a rally for the president, that's a super spreader event. Those damn white supremacists. All getting that, together, that vid. spreading that vid. Yeah, <laughs> all them flaming torches. <laughs> yeah, they even brought all their love tools. <laughs> we're here. We're just hiking through the neighborhood with hoes and rakes. We're all going the Trump rally. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny. Not a single in person. Not one. Yeah, not once has anybody wow. said anything negative to me. Which. I've had people come up to me at the airports, you know, all positive, like, you know, supporters and everything. And other than that, but that's, I mean. Have you ever had anybody rocking a free Eddie t-shirt come up to you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. No like, doubt. Yeah. Do you do every this once for a second? Like, look at you. Ha, 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 ha. It's like, the golden goose. They're, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's cool to have that happen. You know, people come up and just like, dude, I supported you or whatever. And you just say kind words, especially when my kids are around because they'll. That's all I really care about is like my kids, my wife. They see the they see it and they're like, okay, that's yeah, awesome. yeah, it's cool. But yeah, not one, one, not one negative. Maybe they'll change when the book comes out. We'll see. I, the book though is just going to give more context and information. The book is going to, uh, it's going to shock some. I think shock some people. Uh, it's in DOD review yeah. right now. Um, you know, there's probably been five people that have read it who I had read it that are I didn't I don't know them. Um, and the reaction is the same. They're like, this book is amazing. It's super raw, but it's completely changed my mind on everything. And it's, it'll scare people too, because I just put everything out on the table, like everything that happened. And it's, it's a lot. No, I, I, I know. I said that, I said that to Tim, cause Tim Parlatore, we interviewed his lawyer not too long ago. And it was like, it's scary in the aspect of if you didn't have a few different miracles that happened you would be fucked oh life in prison yeah that's without parole i mean so so much like divine intervention happened during that whole thing i mean just the players that got involved i mean 
Bernie Carrick, you know, like I didn't know him. He just read, same as you did, read an article. It's like, this doesn't seem right. He actually called some people, other team guys that were working at the Pentagon. was like, do you know this guy? They're like, yeah, we've heard it. Like he's got a good reputation and this doesn't make sense. So then he reached out to my wife and was like, hey, if you need any help, and that's how we got Tim Parlatori on. I fired the other lawyers I had, and then it was game on from there. I mean, it's always a good feeling though when you get a good. Oh, return. dude, it's like that, night and day. That immediately like comes in with a strategy, like yeah, because that's what I've noticed working with lawyers up to this point. Like, you can tell a bad one right off the bat because they're like, oh, you know, got a review, need to oh. look, need to look how we. You when you got a good one, they're like. Oh, I already have four different plans. <laughs> exactly. Dude, that's how And that's how it is. I mean, I had the first two lawyers I had, we would go to court to my the motions hearings, and literally, like, they wouldn't have prepared shit. They're like shuffling papers five minutes before you got to go into court. And they're like, Yeah, what's the, you know, what's the plan for today? And they're like talking to each other. And me, like, I that's my first time ever dealing with lawyers. So at the time, I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, dude, these guys should fucking be prepared for this, you know. But I was like, I'll just trust them. They, you know, they swear they've done this before. <laughs> and it was, I probably. Oh, Daddy, I've done heart surgery. Come on. Yeah, man. it's not going to be that hard. Just lay you back. got the book, pull it to YouTube. <laughs> yeah, just lay back and trust us. We're good. Uh, yeah, then as soon as I hired Tim, like four months into, I was locked up four months at that point and watching him in the courtroom after having those guys, it was like night and day, breath of fresh air. I was like, thank God. I mean, he was standing up to, the prosecutors, I mean, the judge twice got up and was like screaming at Tim in the courtroom. Like, his little, I'm like, funny you say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me go into this. Oh, he's, yeah. He's a bear in there. It's awesome. And then I got Mark Casey as well. He volunteered to come on. So that was the other, you know, everyone's conspiracy because Mark was one of Trump's lawyers, or he still is. Um, but he, out of the blue, called Bernie and was like, hey, man, I've been watching this seal trial and this doesn't seem right like i want to help out if you know him and bernie's like dude are you kidding me i'm already working with them and he was like well tell him i'll offer my services you know and of course why wouldn't i take on another uh, awesome lawyer yeah. so oh, yeah yeah it all i mean there's so many little things that happened to get to where i'm at today which is i mean you can't look past any of it because it could have been the op real bad yeah. yeah i mean yeah it was it was pretty, dude, the whole thing was nuts. It's just surreal um, all the way to the very end. Yeah, but to be fair, the in, the entire community kind of owes you a huge thing in the aspect of even the fact that you got arrested, you still did a book. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> the whole oh, kind of still, still, got <laughs> still got a book in there. Yeah. <laughs> Still snuck, still snuck it in. I'm like, oh, and this little guy right here. <laughs> BT dubs, guys. You kept it strong. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're still keeping it. Nearly what, 20 years didn't write a book. What do you think? But, but, but it's like, yeah, what are, we, what are SEALs going to write books about eight years from now? The deployments they didn't go on? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I wish one would. That would be amazing. Like, if I went on a deployment. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a story a about my novel. four PI deployments where I didn't do shit. Yeah. We're just kidding, guys. Don't get the yeah. burger. <laughs> they will. <laughs> Somebody always does. I never thought about that, like going in public and then, uh, like, have you ever had anyone come up to you and call you? No, that's the thing, too. It's like I get death threats on the daily and I've never had anyone come up to my face and be like, you're a racist, like they do on the internet. Yeah, I never thought about that because yeah. I don't think anyone I know. I have. Mm, what'd you do? It wasn't even what I did. <laughs> I just got it yelled at. Like, I, got yelled at I got yelled at from the cr across a room. What, what did they like, say to you? It was because of something Tiernan. Like, it was, it was some article. She's like, fuck you guys. I'm like, what? what you, like, you wrote that. You wrote that article. And I'm like, more specific. They're like, I'm. Coffee or die? I'm like, more specific. <laughs> Tia wrote it. I'm like, I don't know. You're still yelling. And she still was yelling. And she wanted me to like take, like, like throw my black rifle shirt away or something. You know, it was just like, 
Why, why am I getting <laughs> yelled at right like, now? Yeah, I'm like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I have <laughs> to so look scared. into this. I have to call somebody and ask. Like, like, I took my shirt off. What else do you want? <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. 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 I'm doing what you want, <laughs> lady. Yeah. Just cry, sobbing. <laughs> like, I've Please got two bars of soap in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, why, woman? Why? I'm clean. <laughs> Dude, that's so weird. I'm just, I'm just this <laughs> Someone <laughs> yelled at you and disagreed with you in public and you didn't just start yelling back. Like, I how, mean, how do you no, do it? I, yeah. I, well, I was more, that was more, I mean, I'll definitely yell and disagree back, yeah. but I've got to figure out what we're arguing with first. Like, yeah, what because I can, I can argue any side. It doesn't matter. If you want to, you sure, want to be, we'll just argue. Yeah, argue. I'll just yeah. argue. Like, Great yeah. for relationships. Tell me what you want me to be. Pro COVID, against COVID, I'll do both sides. Don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can go all day. You want me to be pro Italy, against Italy? Fuck it. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Pick a side. Yeah, but if I don't know, like that, that one took a lot of like, Unpack because she would just give me a little bit every like wait oh I'm sorry what what are we what are you yelling at me about right now an article an article where <laughs> like she, <laughs> and how there she, she was like two years ago I'm like two <laughs> two years <laughs> ago it's yes. horrible okay so so far I have an article two years ago by somebody that's not me and I'm getting in trouble for this right now <laughs> dude so insane. So that's my only one. Now, another one that I do like, though, is the guy that got almost physical with Morgan Luttrell on the plane because he kept calling him Marcus. And when Morgan told him he wasn't Marcus, the guy kept disagreeing with him <laughs> and yelling at him that he definitely was Marcus and told him that Lone Survivor book was practically his Bible and he's read it 18 times. And Morgan finally goes, if you've read it 18 times, did you see the part what? where he has a Fucking twin brother. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine that? Like Morgan has had the two greatest like weird situations happen to him. That situation where a guy is just refusing to acknowledge that he's not Marcus. And then the second one, he was in, he was in Reno in a bar with his entire platoon. And a dude was in the bars telling everyone he was Marcus. No shit. No shit? That's <laughs> <Yeah>. awesome. <laughs> oh, do you know who I got mistaken for on the plane, actually? Matt? Nope. Evan. <laughs> Twice. Somebody, I've had two people come up to me and ask me if I'm the owner of Black Rifle. No and shit. it's because I was wearing, you know, I was Tiny wearing a Black Rifle hat. Yeah. Bearded man. About the same yeah. height and build. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny, though. I was like, uh, no. Kind of leprechaun-ish. I'll leave that up to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You just keep putting it down. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very true. <laughs> but Eddie smiles though. So Yeah, that is yeah. true. Yeah. Evan does not smile. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes it's, a lot of people uncomfortable. Yeah, like Donut's like, does Evan hate me? It's like, no, that's Evan being Evan. He's a troll. <laughs> Evan, come, Evan comes up to me and he's like, Why don't you like me, Donut? And I'm like, I'm oh. Well, like, well, <laughs> you're you're not even through phase one yet. Phase two is 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 the next year he's gonna ask you what your name is every time he sees you. Okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> That's how you know you're moving up. So when do you think, what, do you have any projections of when this book will be? The do? book, I'm going to. We know DOD Review can take anywhere from yeah. three to 68 weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Big gap in there. Huge. I, actually, I even, I, I mean, 168 weeks. Was that two years? What was it? It, it could was, take, It was yeah. almost 19 months for Matt. I for Matt's? Yeah. yeah. It was like 19 months. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so there's, I mean, it's always a wild card. I'm, I'm being optimistic about it and giving it, they've had it for about two and a half months. So I'm going to say about two more months and then. I'm hoping to start threatening it's out by then. Wait till you see what they redact versus what they don't. That's, That's what the biggest surprise where we were like, what? Oh, it's like it's the what? stupidest no. stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's uh so yeah, I mean, I know it's and that's the thing. If they come back because there's a lot of people called out in it. I mean, and so if they try to like hide that stuff, everything in that book is public knowledge. Like I didn't writing the book itself wasn't too difficult because it's not I didn't have to like think or make I was just like this is all, you know, it's all right here. And I had taken notes of everything that had happened. So I, it's going to be interesting to see if they try and redact certain things that makes the Navy look bad. Um, chapter yeah. one, um, Eddie gets fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the <deal>. chapter. <laughs> chapter no, nine. Here's still getting an idea. Fucked. <laughs> There's a lot of that going yeah. on in this book. What if, what if Donut and Eli and I 
author a complete counter to your book as all PhD holding lawyers that were involved in the case yes. <laughs> just to drown out that asshole's book from the new. By that time, people are like, there's already two books about this. Like, we don't yeah, need another one. We like, do that. If we were our Ed Gallagher was, books at yeah. the exact same yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. We're, like, we're like, boom, <laughs> this is the anti. Could you imagine if we did? Because we can make better commercials than him. Well, we can go on book tours together too. Yeah. I mean. It's like we, yeah. have, we have two desks <laughs> across from each other and we're just like, fuck you, fuck yeah. you, fuck you. Like, throw Throwing stuff at each other, yeah. Oh, you're really in that line, motherfuckers. (laughs) We're in the line to get our book signed by you. Get get back to your desk. (laughs) You watch somebody go from my line to yours. Are you serious? You're buying both. This this could be a thing. We'll put a pin in that idea for sure. This could be a new (laughs) way to market. (laughs) This could be a new way to market that idea. Yeah. You have a counter to the book across across the way. It's a whole new marketing strategy. Yeah, it has untouched. But really, like it really would <laughs> fuck him over. Like if you if you had one of your buddies do that, like just hey, dude, put an put, put an, an anti book out. Of the book. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Until I read it, and I'm like, dude, you really had to say all this Come shit on, about me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had to talk about Tommy. Yeah. I said we're gonna keep that. <laughs> that the stuff doesn't have to do with the case. <laughs> None of it does yeah. actually. You, you actually brought just... six new cases on to me right now. <laughs> you said the, the sheep was dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh. this, yeah. I think I think that's an effective strategy. It would piss him off to no end. Especially oh, if we he started is, he's a disgruntled little turd. We started getting getting a lot of press rolling on our anti book. <laughs> yeah. They're like, man, he's this, at home like no this, this book is written really well. I mean, all these guys were doctors that were lawyers, <laughs> part of the case on the other side. Like he says they're experts, right? Yeah, they're three star navy guys. We can go to yeah, right and just have his name. Yeah. We just make up names, and all three books are from his name. <laughs> so it's just really like so when his book comes out, it's just fourth it's one. It's just boom. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, Dave, this is your fifth book. Like, <laughs> what? When that's the thing is, if if it's after we if it's after we do the book tour, he's gonna call up all the Barnes and Nobles and everything, and be like, "Hey, I'd like to come on the." But they're like, "We just." We just had you there. Like, <laughs> no, we don't really need you back. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Our ghost name is his name. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's- I'm Dave Bell. Yeah. <laughs> we just spell it a little differently. Yeah. This would be brilliant. Dave with two Bs. Yeah. <laughs> you should invest in this. Let's do it. Like I said, put a pin in that thing. Yeah. We'll, uh- <laughs> We're ghost riders now, boys. Yes. Oh, wait, no. Are we? How does no. this work? Wait. I'm confused. <laughs> we, need a- we need a whiteboard. Yeah. Are we ghost riders or are... Yeah, because we're going under a pen name. Yeah. You're almost, you're almost like a ghost ghost writer. Mm. That's great. Ghost squared. This can't go wrong. <laughs> no. Not, no, at no. Not at all. <laughs> are, you, are you collecting for video number two now? Yeah, that's what we're talking about it right <laughs> <Yeah>. now. <laughs> the, the point of this whole meeting. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Dave Phillips here. <laughs> <laughs> Our next video. <laughs> Let me tell you about my new book I got coming out. <laughs> Dave Phillips did you saw did you see the Hulu special he did on me? No. Oh, oh it oh. went to straight to Hulu? Fuck. Oh yeah. It was like some well, 14 he did a, people watch that, huh? Oh. <laughs> it was pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> he pretty much spliced all he did was splice the NCIS interviews and like the parts where those little turds in my platoon were like, oh, he's evil and this and that. They he just kept playing that over and over and just made it. I mean, anybody that watched it was like. Dude, what the fuck? Like, this is completely let's just, biased. Let's start a rumor that he was behind Firefest. What's Firefest? I, 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 I know what Firefest is. Yeah, both is, of Jared. you. <laughs> Looking at me like I got a dick is in my brain. No, I, <laughs> I was trying to, I was trying to compute. I'm like, I think I know what Firefest is. <laughs> Fucking Jared. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the super felled music festival. That's oh, it. Yeah, yeah. With yeah. Ja Rule. Yeah, ja Rule. People got stranded yeah. on an island. What's my motherfucking name? <laughs> you mean with Dave Phillips? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rounded up all them Instagram girls. Yeah. yeah. I have too many lawsuits already, man. Yeah, exactly. Sold a bunch of tents and sandwiches. I probably got like five more off of this podcast right Ruby now. Ruby Dog edited that. Really? Yeah. Dang. Ruby Dog is an amazing, amazing YouTube channel. Ruby Dog? Yeah. They're Check old. Yeah, well, I'll show you some yeah. stuff tonight. It's real good. Books is a classic. That's a classic <laughs> one. There's one with Salary has a really good dude on dude makeout scene. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> it's not even joke. Yes. Well, Donut just moved here to Texas. This is his breakout, his breakout episode in Texas. It is. Nice. It is. Tell us, what are your plans? 
all the shit I'm already doing, just keep doing it. And just, I want to do a part two of Eddie's story, though. I really want to do that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, because yeah. that, that video is over a year ago, and you know, it took me a couple of weeks to look at all the bullshit and tr try and piece something together, because every article was saying something different. But that would be cool to do a part two of your whole thing, well, just to see where you're at. All I know. weekend. So tomorrow oh, weekend? Yeah. a great day to grab some interviews. That'd be rad. Yeah. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. How did you, when you were doing my, the first video mm -hmm. and you, you reached out to like a lot of the guys I'd worked, how did you get in contact with them through my wife or Instagram? Instagram. Yeah. Okay. And then I think I asked her at one point, like, is there any other friends I should talk to? Cause yeah. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm not going to say any names, but there are some dudes, um, team guys who like I saw tagging some of your photos and stuff who wouldn't talk to me and like, wouldn't give me a comment. Yeah. So there's sure. a lot of people. Yeah. There's, I mean, I understand it from their point of view too, but Those yeah, careers. the ones that were in the video, they were awesome. So they helped oh, me yeah, a lot. Oh yeah, dude, those guys. I mean, it was, you know, I know you talked to uh, Andy Arbido from yeah. Half Face Blades. I mean, that guy's an amazing human being. Just yeah. one of my best friends. And, uh, but yeah, like that was the other thing that happened like during my, during that whole process is the amount of people that sort of just backed off and were like, eh, like I, I'm cheering you from you from the sidelines, man, but I'm not going to say anything. You're like, well, they, you've, you bro, know. like, you know me. And they're like, yeah, but it's, they were threatening everybody. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah. if you even support this guy, like you're going down. I mean, this is from my command is telling people this. Uh, so yeah, it was pretty disgusting. You and know? that's why I say it's such a miracle was because I know putting myself in that situation, like if it was one of my buddies at the, at the unit, you know, they're coming down. They're telling you, do not, you're not allowed to just jump oh, yeah. in because even at, at the low level of the cow thing that we had happen with us, our, other people were being told, you're not, you're not allowed to, to to help or say anything like people got in trouble for writing good character statements and got docked on actual freaking like uh nco reports because they offered character statements on people that were rolled up in the fucking cow incident like that's fucked up oh dude they <laughs> like, were, yeah they were trying to try and take tridents away from the guys who testified for me at my trial afterwards i mean even after i was proven innocent they went after those guys like for no reason just because they were i mean Afterwards, they were so pissed off, they lost, and they were embarrassed. Obviously. And then that whole charade happened when they came after me again to try and take away my retirement and everything. But then all the they had uh, three officers, you know, two officers testify for me, and they were going to, like, railroad them just for standing up and saying something. And has that all since gone away? That all went away once uh, the president... So it was nuts. After the trial, I went back, and I, you know, I, I showed back up to work. I was like, dude, I'm, I'm ready to go to work again. You know, and they were like, no, no, you're banned. They banned me from the base, all the teams. They shoved me. Oh yeah, they Jeez, put me down dude. on some base. And they're like, yeah, you're not allowed around here anywhere. Um, because, and the reason they gave me, <laughs> this is this is fucking great, is uh, the guys who accuse me are now scared of me that scared I'm Scared for their life. Scared yeah, for their I've life. I've seen that before So they, too. I was like, well- they lied and they got caught lying. They're like, yeah, but they're still scared. And I was like, so anybody can say anybody's scared of somebody and you'll just ban them from the base. And they're like, they just, it was ridiculous. They were embarrassed. They banned me from the base. They were trying to take my, away my retirement. Um, are you supposed to work or report? Like, like, <laughs> like yeah. are you just this, like, did you, well, just, dude, did you just call like a paycheck and then roll into work and like really? everybody just looked at you like, <laughs> oh, I, huh. I actually got a funny story. So yeah, like I would roll in to supply. That's where they put me. And, Check in. They were like, yeah, we don't got nothing for you. And I would just leave. And I had to go check in every day, like still here. But I was like on this, in this limbo where I wasn't allowed to retire because they had to, they had to like uh, approve the um, punishment still. The Admiral did, which is when we started fighting back. Like, dude, you can't take my retirement. So the press, when the president they want to take stepped rank. in, they want to take my rank, which they did. I was actually a senior chief and which I, I, I didn't fight for that. I'm like, I don't, I don't care. Just give me, I just want to retire as a chief and let me out. They uh, took my rank. They wanted to take my complete retirement after 20 years. And so when the president called, he called me and was like, hey, you're going to be able to retire as a chief. And that's it. Like, you can retire. So I was actually flying back to San Diego when he called me. So I showed up. I went into the work where I was banned from and <laughs> walked in there. And I hadn't, you know, I hadn't been in there for probably, you know, 11 months at that point.
walk in. You would have thought I walked in with a shotgun, dude. Like admin, everybody in admin like stood up and they're like, oh my gosh, he's here. And I mean, I went in there cool as a cucumber. was like, hey man, I need my paperwork, my retirement and just some like award stuff that I need to put in there. And this Master Chief comes out. Master Chief Birkenbach. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Complete tool. And uh, he he is like... Sky cranes. Yeah. yeah. Big sky crane. It's be nice and, to see uh, that now. <laughs> he's like, hey, what's up, man? Like, real cool. But he's startled that I was in there. And I was like, hey, how's it going? He bout faced, goes into his office, walks out about 30 seconds later, completely like bowed up. You know, he must have went in there and talked himself up. Like, I'm going to yell at this guy. So he comes out, gets in my face. In front of everybody, he's like, who gave you the authority to come in here? Like, you can't come in here, blah, blah. And I just looked at him calm. It was probably one of my best moments. I was like, the president of the United States gave me the authority to come in here. I was like, now get the fuck out of my face. And he just like, <laughs> he just looked at me and was like, yes. and like walked off. <laughs> Couldn't do a thing about it. Uh, just picture himself psyching himself up in the yeah. office. Yeah. Like, Tell him off. Yeah. You got this. He went back you in his office. He's, he's like, like, damn it. You are a Navy <laughs> SEAL. You are a Navy <laughs> SEAL. You are a Navy <laughs> SEAL. You got this. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Can I reenact this? Yeah. Can oh, I yeah. play this guy? Oh, yeah. definitely. <laughs> yeah. So, like, that whole thing went down. So, it, so after. Trump called, I go back to supply. I'm like, hey, I'm ready to put in for retirement. They're like, oh, no, 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 no. Um, we're going to take your trident now. So you still can't retire. And so I told them, I was like, are you guys serious? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, you know how this looks. Like, it looks like you're giving a middle finger to the president. And they're like, yeah, we don't care. And so that, I told them, I was like, dude, go ahead. Take me to trident review board. It'll be the first time you guys are actually going to ask me my side of the story, even though I know there's a predetermined outcome here. You guys are going to pull my bird. Uh, but literally, like, 48 hours later, <laughs> the president tweeted again, like, you will not be taking his trident. <laughs> like, get back to work. And that had, like, Stop nothing it. to do with me. Like, Come on, he Navy. did that on his own. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Navy. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, it was childish, the whole, the, watching is, the whole thing. So, and it's so apparent. It was it's like, like that until the day I got my retirement ID card. They were just trying to get after me and, like. And insane. they don't care that a jury. Oh, no. That they picked. Mm-hmm. Found you not guilty. No, none of that mattered. <laughs> Hold on, let's try that again. <clears throat> Even the that, jury the- they picked. <laughs> they well, yeah, they picked. So exactly, actually, <laughs> I know how the military process works. I got sadly a minute. I got a cool, cool little bit to tell you about that. That's it's in the book, but I'll I'll tell you right now. So one of the jury members. So I had, uh, I think it was five Marines. One uh, naval officer and one SEAL. The SEAL that was on the jury, his name's John Doyle. He's, I think he's out now. So during jury selection, they, you know, they asked the jury questions like, hey, do you, do you know Eddie Gallagher? You know, so, so they can like kick him off the jury or whatever. If, if they, anybody they, has bias. Yes. Yeah. This dude, I knew him. He'd been to my house five times. And so he, they asked him like, do you know him? And he's like, no. And so I'm sitting there like, what the fuck, you know? He's like, no, I've never, like, I've seen him once in the gym in passing, but that's it. It's just straight lied, right? So we <laughs> had to go back and determine, like, you know, who we're going to kick off the jury because there's 20 members at the time. And so we're like, all right, we're kicking this dude off because he's, we don't know if he's lying to be on my side or not. And when we came back in, the jury selection went down to seven and that was the number we wanted to leave it at. Like, we were just kicking people off left and right, kicked all the officers off, it, Obviously, except Obviously, for one. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when we got down to seven, he was still on there. And we were like, dude, all right. I was like, let's kick him off. And my lawyers were like, no, we need seven is the number we want for jurors. So we pretty much had to just let it go. It turns out that dude was the only one trying to find me guilty. Like, no shit. Yeah. And he, this idiot, the day after I was acquitted, did a whole post on Facebook. Like, how, oh, he's guilty, you know, this whole thing. I mean, a rant. This is a jury member, by the way. So I'm like, this, you're a moron. First off, you're on the jury. You're now you're posting rants on social media. <laughs> a day after. Yeah. <laughs> is this another seal? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So basically, he was implanted into that jury because he worked at Warcom at the time, which is like the, the Death Star, you know, of yeah. NSW. Um, and so they had already, I mean, he was on there to find me guilty. But luckily I had five Marines who 
were like, no, this is all bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. They read the, they read the report. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) They actually like listened and were like, this doesn't make any sense. And they were Marines. They're like, you just took a picture of him. I mean, we pee on (laughs) us. No no defecation. (laughs) (laughs) This has got to be original. Oh, what? 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 <laughs> Too soon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's dude. when you were finally like, thank God I got some Marines. <laughs> oh, bro, the Marines came through in my trial more than anybody. I had Marines testify for me that were on that deployment that worked in, they were part of, you know, in a MARSOC unit. Yeah. Didn't even know these dudes. Like one dude I, you know, met in passing. We were on deployment, but it was a super busy deployment. So I didn't really get to hang out with them. But they came, volunteered, came and testified to give their like, this is what we saw from an outside perspective of that platoon. And they called it, I mean, they called it exactly how it was. They're like, those dudes in this platoon, not the whole platoon, but the, that handful of guys were a bunch of Chippers. cowards. Yeah. They were constantly complaining, never wanting to go out, like blah, blah, blah. They're like, Eddie, you know, you could tell he used to be with the Marines. He, we resonated with him a lot, just his attitude. Like we liked him and you could tell these guys hated it. And that's why this has come to this. Like it came that this whole mess starts with four individuals who just like didn't like me, had that entitled uh, mindset of like, nothing's my fault. It's all, it's all you, you know, they came back from that deployment pretty rattled. It was a busy deployment, but they didn't take time to decompress. Instead, they just blamed Every, every problem they had after the deployment was my fault. I mean, if it rained, it was my fault. If it was anything. So it was, uh, it's pretty nuts to like think back that this whole mess started from these four guys. Just, you That's know. That's what I told uh, our one one of our buddies. I was just like, it sounds like there's four shit bags. Yeah. That don't like their, their higher up. And they were shit bags. That's why he probably di- disagreed with these. But I was like, I guarantee those are shit shit soldiers and that's the problem and the issue and that's where Why it all didn't started they yeah. see through this so that's the crazy thing is like, like what was the command so good about them latching on to this because they went to the command first after they they went there when we got back from deployment they had a bunch of petty complaints they were like oh he's too dang you know he's dangerous he's too aggressive he he could have got one of us killed the stuff the tactics he was using which nobody got killed we cleared him it was a successful deployment so the command was like your guys' complaints don't have any merit here. Like, you yeah, Because know. they asked you to go teach at the ramp school, correct? Yeah, at the, uh, at Salk. Yeah, yeah. trade it. So they were like, listen, he got number one chief of the command. Like, Marsoc gave him praises. Everyone's like, said he did a good job. You guys don't have anything here. And so then they came back like, well, he's a thief. He's a thief. And they're like, what did he steal? Oh, he stole power bars out of care packages. <laughs> the command again was like, listen, you guys need to go decompress. Like, this just sounds like you guys are, you know, rattled and I suggest you decompress. They were like, well, we don't want him. I had been put in for a silver star and a couple of things like, we don't want him to have any of that. And so the command finally got fed up and like, they are almost- these like E5s? These are E5, E6s. <laughs> the command finally Shut was like, <laughs> dude, do you guys have anything on, like, did he do any war crimes, any low act violations? And they, three times are like, no. Oh no, denied no. it three times. And this is what I think this is where it this set them off. They were like, listen, if you didn't do any low act violations, we're not doing anything to them. They're like, okay. And I'm like, yeah. Four months later, they come back. Oh no, we have a low act violation now that we want to report. And so the command's like, okay, what is it? And it was Craig Miller, who was uh my LPO. He was like, Oh, he stabbed a prisoner in the neck. And the command was like, okay, well. We're, I mean, obviously, they got to do what they got to do. Like, we got to report this up. Yep. So that's where it completely went off the rails. NCIS got involved and NCIS just took it and they pretty much formed a prosecution before doing any investigation. Like the first NCIS interview they Because they're they excited did. Oh, that dude. they just got a phone call. Wait, there's a murder oh, we could investigate? Yeah. The military is definitely, you're guilty. Until proven innocent. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the sure. first NCIS interview that I watched was Craig Miller, who was the LPO. This is that NCIS hadn't done any other interviews. They sit down. He literally tells Craig Miller, this is the NCIS agent, Joel Rapinski. He's like, this is an open and shut case. We already have it. So just tell us whatever you, just tell us whatever you want. And they're like, you won't get, they pretty much told everybody like, you're not going to get in trouble for anything. Like we're just after Eddie Gallagher. That's it. So it gave these guys like free range to say anything. And I'm talking 
Dude, they said some of the craziest so perjury shit. isn't even on the table here. No, because they gave them all immunity. Jeez. What? Why? Like, so, and where does NCIS come up with, this is an open and shut case, and they're, yeah. they're starting their first interview. Yeah. Like, Start it up, boys. Like, and why, power bars. When, when are these... <laughs> speed it up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> when do these tapes get made public? Oh, so, okay. I'll go over that right now. So, the book... Because I want to post them on my Instagram. <laughs> so, the way the book... Hey, is Craig like, Miller! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all. It's all coming out. So the, the way the book is written is I wrote it in a way where the reader, it's going to, you know, obviously it's from my point of view. And then my wife has chapters in it. My brother has a chapter and like a couple people have, you know, that were involved in it. But the way I tried to write it um, is so people can read it and make, come up with their own conclusion. I'm not like, oh, you know, these people fuck me. I'm just like, here it is. Here's everything. And so in the book, I put QR codes and people can listen to the whole trial audio. They can watch all the NCIS videos. Cool. Like, I'm not hiding anything. I'm like, dude, here, everything, here's everything. You make the decision. You are giving people their own junior, choose your own adventure Ooh, in a crime case, amazing. which is incredibly popular right now. Yeah. This it's, is it's gonna be really cool. cool. Um, You've got to do the whole thing. I know. Blink. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's... Did... The any Iraqi generals testify in the case? They did. So, oh, they brought them back over, or did they? Yeah. Get so the I, this is oh, the other thing. So the Iraqi general <laughs> who I worked for, they uh, they went out and interviewed him. NCIS did. So during the interview, this guy was like, "He, I was there. He didn't do this. Like he's, you know, he like sat there and praised me and was like, he's he was awesome to work for. Blah blah blah. They hid that interview. They were like, and we'll just put this over here. We ended up like finding it in the pile of evidence that they, they would give us like, I mean, thousands of pages of evidence, you know, a day before we would go to show up to a yeah, hearing. Like, stack and that's legal? Jeez. Oh, dude. They, oh, yeah, they'll stack like is that. that is yeah. that legal? Yeah, it is. I mean, I think what withholding evidence is illegal, which they did on a couple guys. Yeah, but even not even giving your defense a chance to sit. And that's, but well, that's on your defense to call them, be like, dude, Ahead what do you time. have? Like, you have to stay on them because the prosecution is not going to like, give you anything to help your case, to help you. You know, they're like, nope, we'll just give you at the last second. So we found this interview with the boss right before my article 32. And so we're like, hey, we want to call this guy to testify. Dude, the prosecution was like, no, like freaking out about it. The judge finally ruled like, yes, he can come. How um, can they rule against that? Oh, like, hey, we have a witness we would like to call. Oh, no. Because they were saying he was a war criminal. They're like, he was, he's a war criminal. Everyone's a war everyone's criminal. Everyone's a war criminal. Um, they finally brought, so they brought this guy in actually the day. So he showed up before we went to trial because the dates didn't line up when he could fly in from Iraq. So they just taped his interview. Like it was real weird. They called me in, me and Tim in that day to like, Hey, a boss is here. You got, he's going to testify. You guys need to be here when he does it. So I show up, I'm in you know, cami cut off shorts, t-shirt and hat. And Tim's in the same, you know, a free Eddie shirt. We were supposed to be in uniform, I guess, like actually play it out like the trials. So like we walk into court and everyone's like dressed in their dress whites and they're looking at us and they're like, what are you guys doing? And we're like, what? We don't know what's going on. They're like, well, you're supposed to be in uniform, but either way, we're just, we're just going to do it. So that a boss comes in, is testifying. Everything's, you know, he's like, this didn't happen. Prosecution there. So the so prosecution's there. That was the day the prosecutor got relieved. So... The prosecutor is the really nerdy, stupid yeah, looking one, right? Chaz Plack. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Chris, yeah. <laughs> Call him cheese, cheese plate or cheese plate. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that guy. He oh, looks dude. like a fucking doof. He, yeah. Probably one of the ugliest dudes you ever, oh ever look God. at. Oh my God. So I he, feel sorry for that man. <laughs> he's up there cross examining a boss, and Tim gets a text or an email from the judge because we had a different judge that day. And it was like, hey, he's fired. So Tim stands up. Who does that, before you keep going, mm -hmm. who does that come down from? That comes like, from the judge. Like your main judge. Yeah. So your main judge is not there. You have a sit-in judge. Sit -in. This seems like an awfully important witness to have a sit-in judge. This is the is, jury there? No. So the jury, so they played the interview during my trial. So like, okay. they were like, the jury got to watch it during the trial. So this was just all recorded. All right. Um, but yeah, we get that email. Tim stands up. In the middle of the whole thing, he's like, stop, stop. You know, and I was like, the judge looks at him like, what are you doing? He's like, you. And he points at cheese plate and he's like, you're done, dude. Like, get out of here. You're fired. Like, you're relieved. And this guy looked like he's about to start crying. He like turns and looks at his little prosecutor buddies and they're looked at him like, yeah, man, you're gone. 
So he just had to put his stuff down and walk out. <laughs> and yeah. How, why and how did that happen? Because he got caught spying. Um, that's the whole spying. Oh, paper. the spy. Yeah. 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 So he, emails and he stuff. sent emails to all my legal team, to uh, the media, like to he to media public, like the Navy Times, who was starting to write articles that were the truth, you know, because that guy did some investigating of his own. Was like this, none of this makes sense. So he sent spy trackers to all those people so that he could pretty much get all the info that we had. You know, on our case, so that they would know our defense. Like, spy, what's a spy tracker? Like, it's so a, is it a pixel embedded. No, it's no, like a virus. That's it's like just... a virus. Yeah, it's an embedded. Um, and I'm not going to explain this properly. But pretty much, there is Some a shady stuff. Oh yeah, oh that's ballsy. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, dude, Tim caught it. So he, Tim, got the email and was like, "Dude, what is this thing at the bottom of my email?" So he didn't click on it, and he emails Chaz Black, and he's like. Tell me this isn't what I think it is. Tell me this isn't some tracking spyware. No reply. Just like nothing. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> She's <laughs> playing still <laughs> Oh, yeah. She's no playing. ever see it. He's not. No, he's a civilian lawyer now out in San Diego. How? No. So this is the thing, man. Nobody. The Na this is the Navy right here in a nutshell. Nobody was held accountable for anything they did during my trial. Not one person. Like the people that got on the stand and were caught lying, like Nothing happened to them. The prosecutor who was caught spying, nothing. I mean, it was like everything was just pushed under the rug, which is why that's the main reason I wrote the book. Like I, writing the book was probably the most uncomfortable thing that I've done in a long time because I was avidly against writing books. I mean, I was pretty, yeah. pretty verbal about it when I was in like, fuck all these people writing books. So I didn't want to write one, but Bernie, everybody was like, dude, you have to. Like this is, you know, your chance to put your side of the story out. And plus, I'm like, dude, I want people to be held accountable. I mean, and that's why we have the lawsuit with the Navy right now, too, is they were like, oh, we had a mediation. I don't know if I'm supposed to be going into it, but either way, they had, we had a mediation with them. And they were like, too much. yeah, they were pretty much like, how much money, in a way, like, are you looking for? And I was like, I'm, and I told the judge, I'm like, I'm not looking for money. Like, I want people to be held accountable. Like, and I think that's one thing as a country is lost. It's like no one is held accountable for anything anymore. I mean, it's insane. No, yeah. and, and that's why I'm digging deep in this because there's a lot of people out there that have never seen a criminal trial before. And I have. And that really makes you go, oh, shit. Like, yeah, just the games that are played, like, Dude, like just that right it's there theater. of yeah, it's theater. It's all theater. It's theater and it's it's theatrics, it's acting, it's and and then just I don't understand you are we are deciding the fate of a person's life and we're playing games like, oh, we're going to give you this at the nth hour the night before your trial so you guys don't have the manpower or the, yep. or the time to go through it's it. It's all and dirty have, games. Yeah. yeah. By the way, here's a fuck. shitty lawyer on so, top. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and you're like, yeah. what the fuck? So, another, so during my Article 32, you know, they charged me. They brought two more charges on me, which was they said I shot and killed some little girl and old man. Like, out of the blue, they were like, oh, we're going to add these two on there. We were like, how are you even, Quick like, pack. putting these charges on here? Well, one of the turds, Josh Brenz is his name. This guy is a fucking loony bin. He was in my platoon. He tells NCIS, he's like, oh, yeah, I saw this little girl get shot, which we saw tons of kids getting shot over there because ISIS would just, like, send them running to us and, for and then mow them down trying to, like, pull us out or our partner forces out. So he saw this little girl get shot. He's like, oh, I thought it was ISIS at first, but I know it was Eddie. And so NCS is like, how do you know it was him? Were you with him? And he's like, no, he was in another building. But somebody, uh, he gives another name of a guy. He's like, this guy told me he saw him do it. They pull this guy and interview him. This guy was like, no, I never said any of that. And I never saw Eddie shoot any little girl. Let's take, they took that interview and just, Threw that in the trash. No, that's hearsay like all day long. But they were like, just completely hid that evidence. Yeah. And they were like, this is all we need right here. And that charge was thrown on. Wow. Okay, yeah. so let's bet before you guys fucking nail me to the wall for interrupting. <laughs> sorry, we're going back. Yeah. To the general. Oh, yeah. Go recorded. Ahead. They're going to do it. I know they are. You're like, just shut the fuck up and let him talk. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot of things to unpack there here is. that I'm interested in hearing. <laughs> <laughs> and he is, too. He's writing a movie right now. Right now. Um, okay, so General Abbas. Yes. Yep. Tim stands up, 
fires prosecutor. Now what happens? They bring in another prosecutor, just like that from D.C. This guy, uh, Petri Zach, a Petri dish. He looked just like Cheese Black. I mean, it was like almost like a... <laughs> just a replica. Just a replica <laughs> of... Like, Here we go. Yeah, Petri dish and cheese another plate. shit bag. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, though. This dude... Near the end of the trial, because it was crazy. Like, we were sitting there. He was pretty much sitting next to me the whole trial uh, on his prosecution table. I could tell by, like, their last witness, the way he was, like, communicating with me. He was like, dude, this is fucking done. Like, this is so stupid. Like, I could tell by his body language that he didn't believe in the case, even though he, he was just, he was just following orders. Yeah. Like, dude, I got to do this. So, but the other two prosecutors definitely wanted to hammer me. They were you know, going all out. Trying to, a I mean, se- a seal bang cheese plate's girlfriend or wife. <laughs> yeah, probably. He's happened. probably caught a few seals <laughs> in his house <laughs> with his wife. This was this was a vendetta for cheese plate, you would, dude. You would have thought it was like the way they were acting. I was like, what? I mean, if you got to wake up next to cheese plate, <laughs> that's true. It's like a gar- garbage pail kid. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Just an old pig in a human suit. <laughs> it's real stretchy. Um, so what happens with the generals, like? You get you get the gen the general's uh what do you call that? Testimony. Testimony. Yeah. Yeah. So the general, I mean, testifies. He's like, I didn't do any of this. You know, says I didn't do any. He was there the whole time. Just did nothing but like praise me on the stand. And that was it. And then they flew, I mean, flew him back to Iraq. Uh, and then they just played that during the trial. Um, but dude, it, it was nuts, man. Like during the trial, it didn't it didn't matter. Um but well, to the media and to the prosecutors, like their own witness, obviously, was like, no, I did it. Like, I'm the one who did it, whatever, admits to it. I go out because the press, after, the, after that day, the press is all out there. Dude, they didn't even care about that this guy admitted to it. They were just like, you're still going away. Like, they were asking questions like, what are they still going to do to you? So it was, it was like they were fixated on like, something has to happen to you. And I'm like, dude, somebody just admitted to it. And you're still like <laughs> targeting me. It's, but that's, I mean, that's the media. Oh, yeah. They're just going to, they don't care. Yeah. They'll tear you apart. Your name was super hot right then. And it was getting clicks. So anything with like, oh, yeah. Maybe Seal, Eddie Gallagher, any of that stuff. Yeah. Let's ignore everything else. We're still focusing on him because that gets the most clicks. We're making the most money. You ever seen the movie Richard Jewell? Hmm. Dude, you guys watch that movie. It's exact. I watched it probably, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. It's pretty much identical. And it's a true story about the, uh, I think it was the 90-something Olympic bombings um, in Atlanta. And they pinned it on this security guard. Oh, the security oh, guard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know what you're I watched it, though, but it's Dude, good. I was, like, watching it, like, holy shit. Like, this is exactly what we went through. I mean, not to, like, that degree, but. They built the story to fit him oh, exactly. Yeah, the FBI like, messed up, so they decided to, oh, we're going to hang it on this guy. The FBI's never messed up. Yeah. <laughs> Waco. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I trust our government. <laughs> when do you re-enlist? By the way, what's that? When are you re-enlisting? When I, oh, <laughs> I like the FBI. In the air. I do like the FBI. I'm, I'm yeah, determining whether about you know four or six years. We'll good, see. Good, good. <laughs> that nice sign-on bonus. You just yeah. come back. <laughs> the blood money. Up. Yeah, in uniform. Hey, I'm back. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> I actually had guys reach out and like, hey, dude, you should show up to like trade it and just come in as like a guest instructor and just, oh my god know, that would be or, up, or just put your application in for a civilian instructor i thought about doing it just, just to, just fuck, to with fuck with yeah. whoever's there like, ah! like <laughs> losing their minds and things like that have you guys because you're self-publishing right uh i'm going through no uh ballast books okay. it's uh so i have a ghostwriter andy simmons awesome guy um so i'm, I'm going through him has anybody nabbed up the movie rights yet it's because this would be the, a really good so, movie. I dude, think everybody would want to watch oh, it. Oh, dude, it will be. Like, even when I was writing the book. Surprise fucking Jake Tapper hasn't taken I, it uh, <laughs> I couldn't believe, like, as I was, because I, I had to go back through everything. Like, from the beginning and just, like, go through all the NCS interviews again. And it, it sucked, like, listening to all that shit. It, you know, I went to some dark spaces during it, just, like, pissed off. But the thing, I was like, dude, nobody, I, was, I told my wife, I was like, I don't even know if people are going to believe, like, half this shit. Like, cause it's so crazy. So yeah, I mean, it will make, if somebody makes it into a movie, it's, it's going to be good. It's like a few good men meets rules of engagement. Exactly. Who's going to play Eddie? 
William H. Macy. That's 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 <laughs> that's what I'm going for. He's too for. old. He's Frank too Gallagher. old. I don't know. Yeah. He could get into shape no, a little bit. Look at Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson just like got back into shape. Like you know. No, you don't want him. To, you don't want him to be super old. That's true. Like I'm trying to think. Matt I mean, Damon. I would know. I would go. Damon. Dude, damn. I would go. I've with heard. Uh, I've heard that one. I would go notorious. <laughs> or no, bro. Uh, if I could get what? Notorious to do it, that'd be no fucking McGregor. Have, yeah, McGregor. Yes, he's a Connor huge McGregor. Actor. Yeah, he's a big actor. Well, I mean, <laughs> look at him. He's he him walking in, walking in court like this. Connor, please stop doing yeah. that, Mr. McGregor. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how Eddie walks, Mr. McGregor. Yeah. Connor McGregor would be a great Eddie Gallagher. <laughs> Take yeah. four hands. Yes. yes. Let's yeah. keep that going. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't fucking kidding. Committing war crimes. Yeah. It's like, what? Yeah. yeah we, we write a whole new plot line that he's actually Irish and was in the IRA. Like, <laughs> Give me the belt. <laughs> Give me the belt. <laughs> I need the belt. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> this, is the, this is the title of this episode. Conor McGregor plays Eddie Gaines yes. in movie. <laughs> no? What do you mean no? Yeah. <laughs> Tell him no. <laughs> We're vetoing that. It is, that's the title. Yeah. Boom. We're in. Dude. My, See? my family, dude, we're huge McGregor fans in my house. So my kids are going to be like, yes. I, I think, I think it fits. fits. Oh, it'd be awesome. Size, looks. I mean, you'd have to practice an American accent. He could pull it off. Yeah. He, but the, the amount of money he would ask for would probably yeah. be like. I don't know. He might. He might take on something like this because, you know, he has all the money that he needs. And this is kind of a new yeah, endeavor. A new venture. Plus, he's, he's playing added onto his resume. A very iconic story that is going to be seen a lot. Like, yeah. Because I, I really do. I think if somebody picks this up as a movie, like, it's a big deal. Dude, it's going to be big. Like, so the book itself, I was I was telling somebody this the other day because, oh, I actually, so there will be an Apple. Apple's doing a documentary series and a podcast series that's going to come out. About the same time as the book, they're already working on it. A documentary series, yeah. So they already came out and, and interviewed. they're with you. Mm -hmm. It's oh, all about right, all nice. about the trial and Can everything. We be in it? Um, but I was telling them because they're like, Oh, aren't you worried? You know, the book, like, I forget what question they asked me. Like, people are gonna think you're just writing this in spite or whatever. I'm like, No, I was like, Either way, I don't care. I was like, Listen, the book is the book. I'm like, People can read it. I was like, The people who hate me for whatever reason, this isn't gonna change their mind. Like, they're going to hate me no matter what. I was like, but in this, like, whether you think I did it or not, I'm like, this book is more than just like a trial story because it talks about what my wife and brother did for me. I mean, that's the heroes of the book right there. My wife and brother took on two of the most powerful US things. The, the government, U.S. government and the media. They took them on and won. Like, so to me, I'm like, dude, if, if anybody gets anything out of the book, it's like what a strong like family can do to like you know fight back and just the the perseverance my wife and brother had of just like dropping everything in their life to like you know be fully invested in to getting me out of prison uh and there's like a little bit of like a love story in there too you know i talk about how me and my wife met and just everything you know you know we were best friends in high school um it, it's gonna i mean i think it's gonna be a good book for sure there's a the lot in there series. i want to see the docuseries I'll read the book. It's, no, I'm excited for this. Yeah, this it'll be great. Good. Yeah, and your second video. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I see. Are you already Let's planning? do it. Yeah, done. I am. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Don't want to hear. Hi. He did it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my name is David Phillips. <laughs> That's what it's called. I mean, he did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was great. Great information. You know, we don't know when the book's coming out, but nope. Um, but yeah, well, yeah, hopefully in the next couple of months, I'm being optimistic about it. And then uh, just uh, we'll do one little, the Pipe Hitter Foundation. So that's up and running. Um, got that started, uh, I think in May. And we're already helping tons of, tons of dudes. So it's a nonprofit that pretty much we support first responders, law enforcement, and uh, active duty who are being unjustly accused or, you know, being put through the ringer of the, the um, judicial system. Um, we review their case. I have an awesome board and we're like, yep, let's, let's help them. And then we provide money for their legal defense and then also emergency funds for the family because it's a very stressful time to go through all that. Um, and then we also do advocacy for them. Like if they want it, like, Hey, we'll you know advocate for you publicly and try and get people behind you. Um, it's pretty nuts how many dudes we're helping out right now. And a lot of them are, a lot of them are seals, uh, that are just getting, 
railroaded. Um, yeah. Well, are they out for blood now that they they lost you? Yeah. So they're punishing other people because I, I got away with it, as they say. And then, uh, so they're like, well, we need to hang some other, some other people out to dry. And that's what they're trying to do. But we're, myself and Tim Parlatori, is, awesome. they're fighting back. So well, it's good. consider us a resource when you have oh, information sure. on this stuff, because we'd love to help out. I don't like to see you know, foul play yeah. and things that you're supposed to trust. There's uh, one guy, I mean, we should, I could have put you in contact, Aaron Howard. Um, I don't know. You guys actually, Coffee or Die, did a... Uh, is this the Marine? No, he oh. is the uh, development group SEAL who um, got charged for catfishing. And they he went to trial, went to court-martial, found innocent of... They couldn't prove he did any of it because it was just like, once again, false allegations. But what they got him on is conduct unbecoming, which is like the, you know, coverall charge. Like, well, just because you're here, we're going to charge you with this. So he went to the break for a month and then got out and his command, which is a development group, I don't, and they completely took away all of his medical benefits. His, I mean, every, they, they pretty much have shoved this dude out into the street and they're like, see ya, fend for yourself. You're not getting anything. And this guy had been in for 15 years. Um, you know, he's got kids. And so we're fighting back for him and like, dude, you can't punish people like this. Like you're just, and what they're doing is just adding to the 22 a day yeah. epidemic that's going on. Like you're going to throw this guy out into the streets, whether you, whatever you think of him or not, like he's a human being. You can't like, he gave 15 years of service in combat. Like you can't just take away his medical, you know, right. Benefits and everything else. So we're, you know, fully behind him right now um but he'd be a good one to have on here to because yeah, he's absolutely. pretty much uh you said coffee or die's been digging into it as well yeah they already released something? i think so yeah awesome well, we'll 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 check that out and provide some links below thank you for coming yeah well, thank you for eli cuevas double tap eli double tap on instagram i i just got it backwards i'm a little yeah, dyslexic kind of right now it's okay grids can go one you know frontwards or backwards <laughs> exactly they're fine <laughs> i was a good jtac leave me alone <laughs> Donut operator or the operator of donuts. Mm. And Mr. Eddie Gallagher, thank you guys for joining us on Food.